Hi, I'm Yanis from the Passive Management Limited, the UK-based agile, highly effective ID consultancy company. Over through the 2014 and 2015, we've spent a lot of time helping out startups. We've been developing applications for many, many startups. We've been consulting them, doing business analytics, implementing third-party applications, and basically doing anything unique you can and can't imagine for a startup. The tricky bit with what comes to the startups, it is actually, for sure, they have almost no money at all. They may have some bit of funding, but not much. So, what defines a great startup? Actually, anything you start with, anything you imagine with, or anything you plan with, you need to start with planning, for sure. And if you want to plan, for sure, you have a business plan and you have something which you want to develop. And one of these things is, is the project plan. There are many planning tools available in the market, and if you follow the blog post just down in the description, you will find out which tools are actually available in the market. We've shared a few of them with you, not explicitly, but kind of in a short way. But in today's video, I would like to talk about our great uh, knowledge that we would like to share with you, the Agile Management Backlog Sheet which is based on almost free tool, Google Spreadsheet, which is available online. You can sign up with a Google account pretty easy in a few minutes, maybe a bit more because it, it needs to go through some validation and stuff like that, but it's pretty easy at the same time. So me and our colleague have created this great spreadsheet to basically demonstrate you that it's actually to manage an agile-based project with just a simple Google Spreadsheet. Right. Here is how it works. So, here is the sheet, here are the items. You can uh, use it for planning. So, to start with, you would like to add something, an action or an issue. The great thing about it is you can just type it in. I've named it Lorem Epson, I described my action. And for sure, this is the, the, the title of your epic or user story or a bug or a feature or any planned thing you would like to do. It can be an event. Forgot for the sake. Uh, can be an event for sake. Anything you can and can't imagine. So, uh, for sure, you would like to explicitly define or give more comprehensive explanation. What do you mean by that Lorem Ipsum title? Maybe that is just develop something and use Lorem Ipsum as a content. Cool. The one thing to do it is actually is to take and add some comments. And the great reason about the comments, it is actually any user that you share this file with, unless that's a public thing, but we, we, we think that you will share only with, 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 um, with, your, with your own stuff, so you will not share it publicly because you may be planning some pretty business secret things. I mean, not stately secret, but business speaking things. So uh, you can add comments. So anyone that that file is getting shared with, we receive an email update that for instance, me, Yanis, have uh, actually commented something somewhere. Great. So I added some comment. Obviously, I can add it. Lorem Ipsum comment to check uh, this one out and say. Now, for sure, uh, if I would have added a new comment, any user would have received an email that I've added a comment. So by that I get, by that I notify the people that I've just added a comment for a particular issue. So uh, this uh, spreadsheet we've, we've, we've covered in basic agile actions what you would need. So let's start from the left hand. The only thing you don't need to fill in this sheet is the identifier. As you can see, it, it contains a formula, which is basically what it does. It basically checks you, if you added an action, and then it just adds one identifier on top of the previous one, which, for instance, I will stop. Check an email later on. Pretty dumb issue, but okay, fine. And then here you can see it doesn't do for some reason. No, it does in a few seconds, in a, in a matter of few seconds, which is great. 
So, going next, uh, for sure, if you're familiar with the Agile methodology, you can group up issues in a thing called sprints. So, sprints are... what are sprints? If you don't really know what sprints do mean, these are just a workflow iterations. Normally, we use two-week iterations, but sprints can be up from starting from one week and can go up to one month, or even more if you want, but I wouldn't recommend going beyond one month because it's just too long and it's tending too hard to manage. So, in this drop-down you can go up to eight sprints, but I'll show you later how you can add more sprints into this thing. So if you, for instance, will have more sprints. So you have basically, a, we use our by default two weeks, so you have 16 weeks to basically work your project with. And it can actually you can specify your project in phases, which means you can name this an Agile Backlog for project name phase one. Then you would need to prioritize this thing in a matter of the sprint, which priority it is in order that the people can that take it over this one would understand what that means. So in a priority thing, I've basically said that it's a medium priority, which is kind of a, if you have nothing else high importance to do, just do this one. Obviously, I specified a date that I've raised. You can use any date formats. I specified a user. Currently, I have, let's try, I named them just virtually X, Y, Z. You can give it a name, which I've demonstrated like a few minutes ago, and a type. You would have asked why we didn't add the, the default agile types of types. Good question. Reason being for that because we wanted this to be relevant for your business. Some people are not 100% familiar what means each thing in an Agile. You, if you have heard about the Agile, you may have, maybe have come across things like user story, epic, the bug, and things like that. Of course, an issue. But for maybe the people that are in your team or in your just, let's say, it could be just three co-owners start starting some new business. And they would like to sort of, they don't really understand what is epic, what that means. So they would like to relate that to a specific feature of their business. And then we just said that that relates to content. For instance, if you are developing a blog site, which you would like to boost. So this particular issue, Lorem Ipsum, may relate to the content of that blog site. Or it may actually relate to, a, for instance, um, a code to that website specific, some HTML, JavaScript, which you like to add. Or that could be actually related to a business, which means that you need to schedule some business actions in order to boost that blog and things like that. So we left it an open text field so it's more relevant for your project. For sure you would like to know about the statuses. We've specified the statuses. We've got various options. Pretty obvious. I'm not going to dig into that. Try it out yourself. You, If you are doing an IT project, you would like to understand where it is. So, if the, the person who has worked on a particular part of the code has done the job, but it hasn't been pushed anywhere, so it hasn't been shared with anyone else, obviously that person would say, okay, actually it is in my local environment. But, for instance, if you're like, okay, fine, great with that, but I would like to see that myself, for sure, with a local environment, you can schedule an online call and then the person can demonstrate you that. But you, it may be not enough. So, what you will do to do, okay, fine, please give me a time when it will be on the development environment. And here are a few things you can do. As you can see, we've added a note here. So, on the 15th of March, we are planning this to be ready in our local environment. And this is the power of notes. Adding a note is simply and easy. Just right click on a cell and then insert a note and then type your note. I'm not going to type one. We'll use that one above. And that one just says this one. So it would say, fine, in my local, that will be in the 15th of March. For sure, that doesn't really make any sense. I will just move 15th of March here. And for sure, then what I would do, I would just edit, thinking that once it's ready in my local, fine, let's make it the next day. And then here you go. I'm back here and it says that on the development environment, I would see that, or the person who is now want to see, wanting to see that, I would see that, that person would see that on the 16th of March. Great. For sure, the, uh, 
you would need to specify an action owner. So you would ask a, a question, what's the difference between the raised by a user and action owner? The action owner is the currently who owns an action, which means it is in the state somewhere. So it is in the development environment. And if you specify the, the action owner is user Y instead of a user X who raised the bug, which means that there is another person who needs to go to that environment and then check that out. The story points. Again, if you know the Agile methodology, then the story points are actually things how you evaluate your, or how you basically not evaluate. I'm not really sure if that's the right English word. What is the value of your issue for your business? Or in terms of the value, which you might say, well, can we use the priority thing instead of the story points? Well, story points, it's actually the formula for the story points is it's, it takes the value for the business and plus the second argument in that formula is actually how much time it is going to take. And in the story points, you can use a mathematical sequence, which is called the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, and I'm not going to dig into that, how you get to that, just Google, and then I'm sure you will just get your numbers printed on the search screen, and which I did. Uh, of course, I'm a programmer slightly myself, that's why I can apply some certain calculations to get the numbers, but I just copied them literally across here. Now, the story points mean the, 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 the importance plus the second argument is the calculation. So the story points one and two means that that these things are fine, the business case is done, everyone understands what they need to do, basically. One and two mean that the job, the job it just has to be done. Which means it can take, one would take, take an hour, two would take a couple of hours, uh, three, the same place, business case is studied, and then it just takes more time to do. Maybe you need to download some piece of a software, some, uh, some library, some coding stuff, maybe you need to write some tests and stuff like that. So basically, same task, it just takes longer. The five and eight, this is basically, it is something that is the business process is not 100% clear, so basically, we are proposing a solution for some kind of business questions to be covered. And it means that it will take starting from two to, let's say, four days to finish. Great. Understood? The 13, which is the last number, some people use bigger numbers, but the 13 is enough. 13, it means that we've got a loads of questions. Business plus the development questions. So nobody really understands. So your issue may have a title, every kind of kind of things what that would mean, but nobody really understands the requirements. So which means this, for instance, I'll add it to 13, which means this is completely unclear. For sure, it will take a longer time because you need to discuss what actually it is asking this issue, what is the business problem you'd like to solve, things like that. And the rest of the items are pretty obvious. Notes. Or just pronounce anything you would like to share with. Plan closing date, an actual closing date can actually be used for reporting purposes, just to see how actually good that went. If somebody said that it, we plan to close it next Tuesday, but they closed it actually next Friday, so you may say, well, it doesn't make sense. But at the end of the, the week, you will say, okay, fine, I'll say to look what went wrong, and you may actually ask people what was the thing. And I've also added in a story point, just to jump back, uh, just as a note, same way. And the great thing about the notes, as you can see, I just mouse over the, the cell and it just displays what I've noted there. So it's a great thing to add something notable for that user to uh, that you want to share with that user. And how you can see if the note has been added, you can see the, just the, the black triangle on the top um, right corner on the, of the cell. Great. So, uh, here is how you can do it. Pretty easy, pretty obvious. Uh, for sure, it has its own limitations. So, number one, it is it is probably advantage of this. You can use just a simple Skype call to basically schedule all those issues. Uh, for sure, you need to send out some emails saying people that you've just added or planned. Uh, for sure, as this is a spreadsheet, you actually can use the input of these fields to basically create a reporting thing out of the things, what are you, what issues are planned in the sprint one. And stuff like that. 
So, limitations. We do think that the limitations for this one is for 250 to 350 issues. What that means. As you would notice when you get this template, then it goes up to 904 issues. For sure, the only limitation that humans can have is their own imagination. However, from our experience, we think that if you go above 250 and 350 issues, for sure, I think your business has developed already enough. To, or maybe you switch, You need to switch the business model in order to, to, for you to afford something that you can pay for, a proper agile management tool. This is basically for quite a starting up something. As we've said, We've done quite a high budget projects on this and it's pretty well developed and it's pretty flexible. So these are the limitations. Now let me show you how you actually can edit some of these cells just in case you need to amend some information. For instance, your priority queue may differ or the most obvious thing which I should demonstrate right now for sure in your organization you, you will not have users X, Y, Z. We're not MI6 or CIA, we're just normal people. So you would like to change it. So the way how you do it, it is just basically, you can right click on it and use data validation, or you, again, click on a mouse, click on a cell, sorry, not on a mouse, and then use validation tool. And as you see, I've said that my data range is the list of items, which is user X, uh, user Y, and user Z. And if you'd like to change these things, just amend it, Click save and then mouse over the right bottom corner and you see that cross appearing and then just go down. That's easy how it works. The same way you can amend anything you would like to do. For sure, if you like to basically use this, we will share this as an open document later on. But if you would like to copy it, it's again pretty easy thing you do. You basically make a copy and here you go you can make a complete new copy make it privately shared just among your team and that's it i guess i've covered everything i've set up some uh, limitations what this tool has i've demonstrated how all these things do work and uh, at the end as a summary i just say you enjoy it use it and then have a great project bye